This is the Biz News Podcast, one-on-one conversations with experts in business and personal development. Alina Vincent hopes to turn her work success into success for other women. How to do it? She says it's all about monetizing your experience. In this edition of Biz News Interviews, she shares some of her thoughts. When we were thinking about creating this book, the idea was anytime you want to create a business, it starts with an idea and then you get excited and then you start creating services and products. But the ultimate uh, sign of business success is whether your business is profitable or not. And the whole, it's one thing to start a business. It's a very different thing to actually make money in your business. So this book, this Monetize Your Expertise book, actually shows people the elements that you need to have in your business to not just have a business, not just be a business owner, but monetize your expertise, monetize the the skills and knowledge and talents that you have. So you have a business that not just creating an impact, but helping you create income for yourself. Does that apply to every kind of business, uh, whether it's a hardware store, uh, a dentist, or uh, something more elaborate than all of that? Great question. Uh, So specifically for this book, we are focusing on people who are creating expertise-based business. So it's usually an online business where people have, again, knowledge and expertise, talent, skills, experience that they want to turn into uh, a business where they're teaching other people that knowledge and expertise. So uh, some of the concepts will obviously apply apply across the board, whether you have a flower shop or mechanic shop, or you are a financial advisor, because there's a lot of things that have to do with the money mindset, which is true across the board. And then the specific strategies on how do you monetize? How do you price your services? How do you create packages? How do you go out there and sell your stuff? That is more specifically applied to online businesses based on like knowledge and expertise of the, of the creators anybody who would look you up on the the google machine would come to the conclusion that you are the master of uh, facebook tell us why that's so important well for me um you need to find a platform doesn't matter what kind of business you have you need to have platform you need to have people interested in your message interested in your services interested in what you have to offer and you have a choice of where you're creating that platform so for me this platform became facebook because when i first got started i was on pretty much every single platform i was on youtube on instagram on twitter on linkedin and facebook but then when i got a little bit smarter and i started realizing where we are actually getting our best leads our best clients, it turned out to be Facebook. So for the last about seven, eight years, we uh, really focused on mastering the art of Facebook. And for me, Facebook is that magic tool where we're connecting with our ideal clients, we're creating relationships, we're having conversations. Because first of all, it's a free tool, regardless of how you feel about Facebook and the politics behind the scenes. It's a tool that billions of people use. So if you are trying to reach people, that your people are definitely on Facebook. And the second part that I love about Facebook is their abilities to create communities. I don't know any other social media platform that is that great at creating communities where people can come together by interest, by hobbies, by mission, by what they want to achieve in life and have honest, vulnerable, deep conversations. So Facebook groups is where uh, we're kind of putting all of our money into and all of our effort into. And it's a great way to have build those relationships, position yourself as the leader and gather people who want to have the conversation that you want to lead. But there are billions of people using Facebook. How do you stand out? How do you, do you have to advertise, spend money? Well, uh, personally, we don't. We don't use Facebook in our business. Everything that we teach people that has to do with Facebook, we are uh, using organic, uh, content-based, authority-based, relationship-based marketing. So we actually don't spend a penny on Facebook ads, and that's not something we teach. It all comes down to uh, sharing your opinions, sharing your expertise, and having the conversations. And again, this is where Facebook groups come in, because simply by creating a Facebook group, you you are uh, 
putting a stake in the ground and you're saying, I'm going to gather people who are interested in this specific conversation. And the beautiful thing about Facebook groups is people self-select to join your group. So even though there are billions of people on Facebook, people who join your group, they basically raise their hand and said, I want to hear more about this or I want to hear more from you. So for example, my Facebook group right now is over 36,000 people. So I know everybody who joined is interested in growing their online business is interested in being uh, among other like-minded people and want and eager to hear what I have to share with them. So this allows you to kind of segment your people, people who are interested in the specific conversation. So it makes it really easy to reach out to people who are interested in what you have to share. Alina, if you have 36,000 people in your group, how much time are you spending on that? Oh my gosh, I love your questions. Uh, and this is a question we get a lot. I actually spend maybe five minutes a day on that Facebook group. Uh, we have very uh, set expectations. I do have one assistant that works probably a couple of hours a week managing the group and uh, accepting new people and watching out that the rules are not violated. But the one of the big keys, and this is something we teach people on how to create active and engaged Facebook communities, is to establish the expectation that when you have a group, it's not a place where people come for free advice and you have to babysit and entertain them all day long. This is not the place that I'm going to go check out every five minutes to make sure everybody gets their questions answered. The right way of creating a Facebook community is by uh, setting up the expectation that the group is about them, not about you. So this way, the conversations are happening, whether I'm in the group or not. If somebody is asking a question, there's going to be other people who are going to come contribute, share their recommendations, share their opinions. So if you set the culture of kind of, instead of it being a lecture where you're sitting and just spewing information of people, you, you and your self, uh, soapbox and you're like my way or highway, those are the groups where you have to spend hours a day monitoring and entertaining people and educating people. If you set it up more of like a networking meeting where you gather people in the same room and you just give them a few prompts, you give them a little bit of a direction, but the value in, in the community, the value in what everybody else has to contribute to the group, then it only takes you a couple of minutes a day to monitor and share whatever you want to share. So how do you make money out of that? Ooh, so our, like my preferred way of monetizing Facebook communities is by running uh, Facebook challenges. So free five-day challenges, which is a basically a mini training that you run inside of your Facebook group and people have to join your list. So you're growing your, one of the top business assets on your business, your email list. And at the end of the challenge, you're creating a desire for your next offer. So if you create that five-day challenge in the right way, you you basically have people interested in what you have to offer before you even make that offer. So we do challenge-based launches in a group. We usually run multiple challenges a year. So this year we've done five challenges so far. I might even do one more uh, in the last months of the year, but basically you do free five-day training. You give people tons of value. You have them experience what it would be like to work with you. You give them a transformation so they start seeing the results and then they want more. And then they say, okay, and now I have this new program coming up, or I have an event, or I have a book, or uh, would you like to coach with me? And people are eager and already waiting for that offer, and they can't wait to say yes to you. Alina, your background, if I understand it correctly, you were a highly successful photographer. Uh, am I correct <laughs> in that? Yes, that's part of my career. I actually started in education. I spent the first 16 years of my professional career uh, working as a lecturer at the university and getting a whole bunch of advanced degrees. And I also worked for six years as an instructional designer, creating online and hybrid programs at the university. And then I decided to go on, on my own because I realized that I was allergic to having a boss. <laughs> and the first business I created was uh, a photography business. And uh, that took a while. I made a lot of mistakes. I also did a lot of right things. We got the business to over six figures in the first 18 months, which in a kind of a artsy space is kind of unusual. And then uh, I realized that 
what I created was not scalable and was not leveraged because everything that I was doing was depending on me showing up and me doing the work. Everything was one-on-one. -on -one. And even though we were making pretty good money, that business could not grow anymore because there was simply no more hours in a day left. So that's when I shifted and I created a business that is a lot more leveraged that I can go globally versus only primarily working in a local space and that I can serve instead of one to one and like basically trading money uh, for hours for dollars. Now I can work with multiple people at a time. We sometimes serve hundreds or thousands of people at a time, and it allows me to make an impact all over the world. Now, getting back to the online business, mm -hmm. uh, what is the common, most common mistake that entrepreneurs make in trying to do this? Oh, <laughs> that's kind of, that's a really big question. So let me see. Um, just trying to narrow it down. Because oh, it's I okay. I'm going to say you, you, you could probably provide a list, I suspect. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, one of the big mistakes is, especially at the very beginning, when we are kind of looking at all of the different options, one of the big mistakes that people make is they think they need to be everywhere and they need to be help, helping everyone in their business. And I've made that mistake multiple times and actually in both of my businesses before I realized what I was doing. And I see a lot of new entrepreneurs trying to say, like, but my method works for everyone. You can apply it to any transformation or any trauma or or any challenge. And that is actually what's going to hold you back from making money and from standing out. Where you can uh, move forward and stand out and actually start creating a profitable business is you need to be really narrow. You need to have very specific audience you want to work with. You have to choose one specific solution that you're providing to one specific problem. And you also need to make sure it's not something you know that people need. It's something that people are actually Actually actively looking to solve. So that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I've made. So when I had a photography business, brick and mortar business, my mistake was I was saying, I'm good as a photographer. And I was, and I have a great camera and I have a great eye and I was creative. And I had experience of probably 20, 30 years of shooting anywhere from big, large stadiums with hundreds of thousands of people and in the broom closet. So of course, when I went to say, I want to have a business, I said, I can do everything. I can take pictures of families and pets and products and real estate and pretty flowers and pretty much anything. And at one point, my website had 17 different tabs on stuff that I could offer. And I was very surprised that nobody was reaching out to me and wanting to work with me. And it wasn't until probably like past six months or so that I started narrowing it down. And I eventually said, I'm only specializing in headshots and marketing photographer for business owners owners and professional people that my business skyrocketed because now people realized what I was doing. They could refer me to other people. It was very clear what I was really good at. And that's how that's, that was the beginning of my success in my photography business. And I did the same thing in when I started my coaching business. I started by saying, I can coach you on anything you need. I'll take you to the next level. Just tell me where you're struggling and I'll help you with that. And I was getting rejection after rejection after rejection. The first four months in my coaching business, I did not get a single client. And looking back, I realized it's because I was so general and generic. And I was trying to be pretend that I was good at everything. It wasn't until I focused and my very first program I created was on how to get uh, clients from Facebook organically, which is what we just talked about, that like, almost overnight, I had 47 people signing up for my program because I got very specific. So if you wanted to look at the mistake is the more specific you are with your audience, with the problem you're solving and solution you're providing, you're going to have success. If you're trying to be everyone for every, everybody and trying to be everywhere, you're just going to be overwhelmed and probably not create the results that you want. It, it sounds almost counterintuitive because Absolutely. surely you want to spread a broadcast, if you will, of everything that you can do to create the, the largest net to catch the most fish. Yeah, and that's why I think it's such a struggle for people because we think if we're not offering everything to everyone, we're going to make less money. 
Because if I have 17 tabs on my website, I have 17 times more chances of getting clients. And it's absolutely counterintuitive. And when you are spread so thin, your message is also very thin. Your message is very diluted. And people don't remember that you specialize in something because you're trying to promote everything. Like I know coaches who say like, oh, I can help you with your uh, money mindset and I can help you get a job and I can help you find your soulmate. And I'm also can help you lose your lose weight. And it's like, I don't even know what you do. <laughs> like it's really hard to stand out. So the more specific you are, the more loud your message will be, the more clear your message will be and less diluted. So when people ask me, like, how do you stand out? Be known for one thing that you do really, really well versus trying to be everyone. And yes, it's counterintuitive. And this is why so many people get stuck in it because the I had exactly the same thought, like the more things I can offer, the more money I will make. But it's not, unfortunately, that that's not how it works. Uh, there must be a website that you have created for people to get more information about you and what you do. Actually, the most up-to-date and dynamic way to find out what we're up to and what we do is joining our Facebook group. So you can definitely check out our website, businesssuccessedge.com. But if you want to actually talk to me and see what we're up to and participate in uh, one of our free challenges, our Facebook group is called Business Owners Who Think Big. Just ask to join and you're going to be part of our fun and engaged community of other online experts. Alina, what would you like to add that we haven't had a chance to talk about? Um, well, I want to make sure that people understand that it it's, could take a while or could take a little bit of time and effort to create a business, but anybody can start. Everybody has something in you that you can share with other people. I actually, so our book, Monetize Your Expertise, is actually a third book in a series. We have started with Teach Your Expertise. So if you're still not sure what your expertise is, you don't know how to turn it into business, you have not recognized yet what it is that others might want from you, you might want to start here. Then we have another book called Leverage Your Expertise that teaches you how do you go from one-on-one -on -one business to one-to-many so you can support more people, so you can create bigger income without working more hours and you leverage your time, your resources, your experience. And there's like a whole entire um, five pillars of leverage that described in this book. And our third book is the Monetize Your Expertise. How do you actually make money on your existing knowledge and expertise? So I would invite anybody who is interested in this journey to check out the ser these series of books and know that right now you already have something in you that others will pay money to learn because anything that you've experienced in your life, anything that you've helped others through, anything that brought you to this point, this amazing collection of knowledge, expertise, certifications, educations, life experiences that brought you to this moment, you're the only one who has that solution for somebody who is still struggling with it, who is a couple of steps behind you. You've been watching the Biz News Podcast. We welcome your input. Send your email to editor at biznews.com. Thanks for watching.